Are you an entrepreneur? Are you brave enough to face the might of the Make You Moves charges? It's no use standing there and thumb sucking an answer. Mm. You work five hours a day. Yes. You're lazy. Have you taken samples to them? Uh, no, um, we haven't. I do feel a little bit disrespected, and that's why mm. I'm, I'm a little bit angry. Mm. Is there no fuel on the business model leader? Do you want to pitch for 50,000 rand cash injection into your business? The stage is set for you to be part of this amazing opportunity for young entrepreneurs. With precious minutes to make an impression, nailing a pitch can come down to what you say or don't say. Kwis kabali sokal, si bone ama business, ama san, el tu lila kwis kabaye silandelai. Gotwa, chenga maje si zotinga ama business, aman. Wana gazo tola ituba logo tibanga, upichala lom komela lona oga 50,000 rand cash injection kuma business wam. Nam sanji gama chachi zwe tu asobe e kwaninga ama business nga linye nga linye ka pansi bwesto elipkali. The road to the final is in far ahead. Gotwa inkabe mkubani na oso ngeena guskabe silandelai. We are about to find out. Let's come to is we take mele by ends. Uguti ye bonak mele back one in game. I pitch in gaini in gaini. I enzongu so ma business wait. Kule sas kabale so kala si vile gusono. Uguti ye game vawa la poge. A pin de football one in yongu. I ma task so ma business wait to get the beniga zo ona guti ba wenz. Ba wenz e ganja. Let's say ye. Paketa ma business a money. Azo jule la guis kabale si lande la yo. Wela manga. Na o ma business a ma shan. La o ma church is wait. Azo be e wat one in. At King. Karose Karose, Mpa Essentials, Unakaladi Gardens, Puti ne Supreme Car Wash. Na wama chacha mabili, azobe esiza ukuze siku wazu kieta mapiznisi amani na mshachi. Upalisa mapitilani, ongu msungu uli futi ne CEO ye NZ Afrika. Yena onolu azu olu nzuluga kulu eksize ni oso mapiznisi abasa fufusa. Puti upinda siza mapiznisi ukuze wazu tola imani. Ayabonga kaw, yena age wii development economies, pese kapinda beo soma business, upinde ege futi, abe ngu msagazi, kwe zama business, na kwe ze zimali, nisa simo so mnoto, sala pa eka. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the deliberation. So we're going to take a few moments, understand each business, look at their background, and then we're going to look at their pitch. And most importantly, we're going to look at the execution of their tasks. We gave them time to complete their tasks that were for the benefit of their business. And let's see who's done what they said they were going to do, who did it well, who didn't do it so well. And we'll start with our first business. Let's take a look. My name is Kutum Pajon. I'm in the water business. Um, we do uh, dispenser rentals and the refills that comes with the dispensers. We also do bottled water. We're able to brand plus we've got our, our own brand. We're a very special company. We're still uh, small, meaning we're able to adapt to different environments. We're based in Midrand at a place called Cospace. And you can also find us on all the social media platforms, your Instagram, Twitter and uh, Facebook, SMPA Essentials, PTY, LTD. So, MPA Essentials, you know, everybody needs water. Mm. Uh, the quality of our water has dropped, apparently. Um, I found nothing unique about his business. On the capital investment, um, we would like to further purchase um, 16 dispensers. Um, one dispenser um, um, can cost around 2,100 rands, and that will amount to 36,600. And then the other thing that we'll need, um, if we're going to be purchasing more um, dispensers, we'll need um, the bottles that go with um, the dispensers. And um, with 30 dispenser bottles, um, that should cost uh, 6,000 rands. I'm not sure 
in a business like this, as we said, low margin, where you need a lot of sort of volumes to actually justify the investment that you make, that 50K you would want to use to buy 16 dispensers. I don't think that's the priority intervention that you need in your business. We want you to do a few things yes. that we believe will benefit your business, okay? Mm -hmm. The first thing is go and find out there are different companies that offer a call outsourcing service. Okay. That means that there's always somebody there to answer your calls. Okay. Secondly, find a way to hustle hiring an admin person next week. That can deliver the water, take messages, call back people, do the okay. schedule, that kind of stuff, process orders that will free up your time. It'll free you up to do two things. Go and see a hundred businesses in two weeks. And then lastly, it's part of what Martin was talking about and Luca spoke about it as well. Just go out there and see if you can get into any tuck shops, street vendors, um, people that are already selling water, Kodi Renking, Kodi Robotong, tuck shops, etc., etc. Come back and see a few of those and see if you can't move some bottled water. What's nice about that is that once you have the client on board, because it's consumers paying for the product, it happens, it takes care of itself. You don't even need to get involved. Every week they'll order because they need to sell the water. This is your project. <clears throat> so you're running serious projects here, but then um, I don't see any Empire Essentials uh, dispenser or even bottled water. Uh, where is my bottle of water? No, 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 no. I'm still a loyal customer. Why it's for a preventer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm water. I sell it online. So you've got my competitor here. Yes, your competitor. First and foremost, if you want uh, to compete against this person, we need to find out about your dispensing unit. Another you know, one way we hold these bottles. Yes. If your bottles come with that, we mm -hmm. need to give you a shot. Also, when you bottle the water, I'll get them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, how does that matter, man? This guy, how many man? So, okay. The first thing he did, if you look at his address, he just went to the businesses in his office park. Mm -hmm. This guy just gives me the impression that he is totally lazy and he's not wanting to put the effort into his business. He's not pushing his brand. He hardly even went out. There's nothing about this entrepreneur that says, I'm hungry and I want to make this a success. I mean, that's exactly nothing. what Pepsi was saying nothing. to him, to say, go and hire an admin person to take mm. care of all of these things. Yes. And all you do is client face. Go, right? go out there. But also he was asked to go and see 10 different, new new different businesses every single day. And he then decided to go and see Ochombag. Exactly. I mean, he's in the Midrand area for me. How many car sales places are in the mm. Midrand area? <clears throat> All of those people, if you walk into any car dealership right now, they have bottled water because that's their little giveaway. If somebody goes to service their vehicle, there's a bottle of water in your car when you, when you collect it. He hasn't gone to see any of those people. Um, but also, I get a sense from reading his profile that he's probably in the wrong part of the water value chain. So a big chunk of what he talks about is his uh, processing system that purifies the water to get it to where it needs to be. And maybe if that is his interest, that's what he should focus on, yes. rather than the hard yards that are needed on the retail end of your value Yes, chain. he's not interested in selling anything. The guy is not selling, and it's clear he's not selling. I mean, is there anything that you find positive about this business? One thing is, um, look, he's obviously someone who's smart. He has the capabilities of turning this around if you just put more passion and energy towards this. And secondly, the product is a product that is wanted. Mm. For the very fact that we're seeing all of these little water dispenser shops cropping up, it means that there's a market for it. So he is tapping into a market that is growing. There's a trend, there's opportunity here, 
He just needs to be the right person for it. There's a need, I think, also on the other end, on the other end to think about wh what does expansion look like? Expansion can't be selling one of these um, and trying to fill them up in a tuck shop or a... To your friend. A, to your friends or people that work in the same office park. But for that, you need a properly packaged product and a proper story behind what you're selling because any Tom, Dick or Harry can sell water. And you need a strong entrepreneur. All right, let's look at the next business. Greetings, everybody. My name is Vusi, Vusi Art King. Uh, I own a concept store in East Rand. I'm a tattoo artist. Uh, we do tattoos and a bit of photography, and we do unique tattoos because we're black and young, so you can hardly find artists like us around SA. You can usually find us at the shop, which is at Kosana 4A Robots. We open like 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., and we usually take bookings for people who are booking for later times. I'm at a bit of a loss for words. <laughs> <coughs> not quite sure what to say. Melissa, what do you think? I'm so not impressed. I don't know. I, I, I can't see a real business. I think this is fun. This is a real cool guy. He's fun. You can see he's fun. He's artistic. I like watching him just by his persona. But business-wise, he doesn't actually have a business. He just has a hobby in a container. The reason I'm here and willing, uh, wishing that you can invest this in me is because of with that 50 grand, this would change SA in a whole, you know? This would make my life easier because I'll be able to buy equipment, I'll be able to stock in shelves, I'll be able to brand the shop in town like I did in the one in the, in the, in the, in the township. Uh, I'll be able to be one of the first uh, black tattoo artists to own a shop in town. got a few things that we'd like you to look at doing and there are specifically three tasks. Um, the first one is to do research both for the Gatle Hong store and also for what you want to do at Josie. At least go and see three or four places and come back with, 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 with ideas yeah. that can help you improve your business. That's the first thing. The second thing in terms of research is also Find what else will work. Mm. The photography studio is not working. Mm. And then the third thing was a mentor. You have to find a mentor, formally ask them to be a mentor, yeah. and ask them for advice and get input from them. They don't necessarily have to. In fact, I would suggest that it's not somebody in the tattoo yeah. business. It's not another artist. Totally. It's got to be a yeah. business person awesome. yeah. that can help you out with thinking around admin, yeah. around business principles and that Strategy. kind of thing, right? Uh, right now, Nyagu Chamba, who's a tattoo artist, is also having a shop around his rent. So he's been doing tattoos for a long time. So I believe he also can teach me something around tattoos in terms of things that I can know uh, of the admin staff, how does he treat it, what things does he do to make more sales besides tattoos, you know? So we're just here. Um, Kamal Temba Basubu. Uh, the name of the shop is Last Temptation Tattoos. Uh, well, what's, uh, what type of services do you offer? Uh, I'm offering tattoos, but soon James will be trying to have Uh, I went to Black, and I was told about making him my mentor, so I agreed he's going to be my mentor every time. I went to Tepang as a tattoo artist. I realized Tepang is also venturing in piercings, and then uh, he's also having another uh, business they do him on the next door, which they're going to be selling soft rings and food. I went to Banano, uh, in town. Uh, I also went to Last Temptation. I learned a lot from meeting those guys. Yeah, I'm a bit disappointed, and um, I share Palace's um, view that it's a hobby, and he must continue with his hobby. You know, some businesses are not necessarily mm. meant to be big exactly. businesses. Mm. They're meant to be subsistence businesses, yeah. and I think that's okay. I think we need yeah. more and more of those small businesses because we don't have enough jobs for people. Yeah. So if you're able to go out there, put some coins together, 
and have something that feeds you that's like a job yeah. that depends on you it's okay yes small yeah. it's, fine. it's a small hustle but it, it, and it's it, okay. it, it assists him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. but also yes. i think you know starting out as small and even in a hobby like manner allows him at some point to think about what synergies he can find yeah. so i think it's good that he's starting small and maybe the next step is to say what other offerings yeah. could have synergies to what I'm doing as a tattoo artist and yeah. not necessarily say Kangala Makip Kip or Kangala yeah. Equal Drink or something like that. But there was nobody that he went to go and see that was markedly different from him. There was nobody that he went to go and see that was what his business could look like in a few years mm. if you know he really put some gas behind it look i think my disappointment is if you're a little artist and you're doing your thing that's fine but if you come to a show like this mm. and you're saying you want 50,000 rands you're expected to think differently you're expected to up your game i don't think he understands his business well because in his in his um paperwork he says i'm the only person in the east rand yet he went to another <laughs> artist exactly. in the east rand mm. You know, so he's not understanding. It's still, like you say, in the immature, playful s yeah. space. And only he can change his mindset. He hasn't switched exactly. the. He hasn't switched to no. uh, the business side mm. of things yet. It's still playful. It's still, um, you know, elementary. Yeah. If I could put it that way. All right. So here's the million-dollar question: Would you put your money into this business? Let us check out uh, Mulaka Ladi Gardens. Uh, interesting story. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know how I feel about the business, but the entrepreneur and the work that she's put into this business, the sacrifices that her and her family have made, it's such a touching story. It made me so sad and it filled me, it inspired me in terms of the heart that this woman has. Let's take a look at it and see So you're if... saying you made emotional decisions? Well, I mean, <laughs> the entrepreneur, I remember it's, it's about the business, but it's also about the jockey. Mm. I think the entrepreneur is fantastic. And I think if this doesn't work out, whatever she does after or, you know, thereafter, you know, whatever, eventually she's gonna hit the right note and she's gonna, build a business that works. My name is Umpile Matani, founder of Monakaladi Gardens, wedding and conference venue. We specialize in weddings, but we also do conferencing, birthday parties, metric farewells, any kind of function really. We have indoor and outdoor space to cater for that. Uh, what makes us unique is that we take our clients very seriously. So we make sure we go all out to please our clients and make sure their dream day is what they get when they get here. Why you should invest 50,000 Rand into Monakaladi Gardens? If we get the 50,000 Rand, um, 22,000 Rand will go towards the Wi Fi installation, 10,000 Rand will go towards marketing, um, and then 20,000 Rand will go towards um, a mobile food trailer. So the total would make about 50,000 Rand. We're going to give you mm -hmm. some tasks. Okay. Okay. So we'd like you to really explore this uh, potential business from corporates. Okay. So you need to start knocking on doors. You need to go out there and speak to corporates. Do you have to see at least 10 people okay. in the next two to three weeks? Okay. So the first uh, place that we went to is ESCOM. And then as the local staff, they only organize like the year-end functions and so forth, smaller functions that they, the staff, contribute towards. So we got her numbers. She's going to give us somebody relevant in the planning committee of those small functions and we will be in touch with her. Uh, as a branch office, uh, we, we, we have sufficient office space or venue for whatever uh, services we may need to offer. Mm -hmm. However, on issues like catering, mm -hmm. uh, there's a need, yes, we do offer training programs we require mm -hmm. to provide 
attachments for the trainees. So we start today our marketing visits, more seasons, Aluba and Kokoto. They have a lot of uh, auditors that come in, so they normally require sleepover accommodation. And then she also explained how that they usually need to be for the year and function. And then some, some very uh, cost-effective marketing at the moment is social media platforms. Um, I want you to pay close attention. It's extremely powerful. Fentola um, helped us to design a two-pager business profile. Um, so we've just updated it a bit and polished it up. So this is what we're going to be using. Basically, it just has an overview of the business. We had to put the two stars there so that it shows that we're two star graded. What do you guys think? I like the business. Um, although I think as a result of two factors, one being the market that it finds itself in, um, there's a big challenge in sort of finding the relationships with corporates and with some of the government departments that are there. The other issue, I think she needs an injection much bigger than 50,000 Rand. I don't think she's tapped enough into that market of the corporate. She's gone very public sector. Mm. CISO is probably the only company mm. that is the corporate. Uh, that's corporate. So I think she's actually losing out there because going to the public sector, you have to tender for it. And it's, you know, you, you, you fall into a pool mm. of hundreds of, um, of of facilities, whereas if you choose going the corporate route, even if it's smaller mm. corporates, you but could many. get a nice, yeah, you could Got get you. a good um, avenue in there. So and the other challenge with public sector, of course, is that once you do secure the work, there's cash flow challenges exactly. that come with late payment mm. and, and that kind of thing. I don't think she can afford to wait mm. four or five months mm. for someone to pay mm -hmm. her. Yeah. I remember exactly when we were deliberating during her episode. Mm. I disagreed when we started talking about catering mm. and a potential food truck, mm. Mm. because she's got a massive kitchen apparently with, with everything you know that she needs in order to cater sure. for large scale. Okay. Having a kitchen does not make you a caterer. Yes, she cooks for some of the events, so they've got yes. the infrastructure that perhaps got the skills. I don't mind it as a direction, mm. but we've got to understand that it is a departure from yes. what she's doing. Yeah. The mobile trailer, where you're going out and essentially like a food truck. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a different business. I take that back, I was wrong. But I don't understand why, why you're entertaining the food truck now. I'll tell you why. I almost kind of I, I split her business into two. And I said, okay, she needs cash. Daily, exactly. weekly, monthly. Mm -hmm. The food truck would give her daily cash. The hosting of more events, where she hosts her own events kids fun day mm. apparently there's a lack of that in my mm. places where you can just go with your kids and spend the afternoon and they're engaged and they've got stuff to do those kinds of things are going to generate cash yeah. um, and quick cash. quick cash i'm saying cook the food make the sandwiches go and have three or four unemployed people with their baskets go into these so like a mobile canteen correct so instead of a f spending all of that money on one food truck that mm. can only go to one area i would much mobile rather mobile canteen food no, truck it's not potato the same potato thing. potato it's not the same I thing i think the idea here is making use of that big kitchen correct right yeah. make to use its full of capacity that, of, of use Absolutely. of its full capacity because yeah. most people don't have that benefit correct. Exactly. and you have a facility that does correct. have it so it's hard to get them to come to you. Absolutely. So mm. go out there and maybe by branding what you're going out there with, it will draw them back to you That's again. a form of marketing. Yeah. I do think there's an opportunity to leverage the fact that from time to time she does have events in her space. Um, and there's a range of service providers potentially that would want to create collaborations with her. I think, for instance, if you're talking about a photographer, if she can come to them and say, look, I've got on average three events a month. Mm. So let's cut a deal that says, actually, for these three events a month, I'm giving you certainty and consistency of business. Sure. And all you do is that we take sort of a cut of, of, your, mm. of your takings. And all she does then in that instance is that she offers that as an offering. Yeah. Sure. So when people come, they pay an additional premium because they know you'll have a professional photographer on hand Correct. to be able to take pictures. Correct. For yeah, totally agree. Let's take a look at the next business. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Mogheni Marcus Msomi. I'm the owner of Car Wash Supreme. My business uh, concentrates on washing cars. We are located in five sites, which is a pavilion, Wilson's Wharf, Ushaga Marine, and two corporate clients. Our unique selling point is that our system is water-wise, so rather than using 25 liters of water, we only use five liters. And the good thing is, you don't have to queue at conven like con other conventional car washes. You actually park your car and we come to you. Car wash supreme. The guy's making money. I like the fact that he's got, there's such capacity for growth. Definitely a, a strong entrepreneur. I mean, he's shown that he's got the goods, he's proved it, and he's making proper money. So I'm, I mean, I was really surprised to see a car wash business making this kind of money. I was really <coughs> impressed. Uh, my promise to you, if I were able to get this 50,000 rand is easy, I would expand my business, I would create jobs, assist SMMEs who want to get into the eco-friendly car wash system, not only by giving them cards, but also mentoring them, get more sites, get liability insurance to make sure that my company is covered and put proper systems in place. We want you to do some tasks mm. that we think will benefit your business. Okay. What I want you to go and do is I want you to go and find a small advertising agency in Durban, mm. somebody you can work with, negotiate the cheapest possible rate, let them help you develop a marketing strategy for your business. So for me, it's critical that you get your insurance portfolio mm -hmm. in order, mm -hmm. okay? So you need to meet up with um, an insurance broker and make sure that you have all the necessary insurances in yeah. place. I was finally able to get the liability insurance. I went to some brokers who came to site, checked everything out and then they I was able to get the liability insurance with half a million rand. Go and see the Mercita. Because mm. for me, that is going to open the pipeline for those people that you want to employ. It's going to also give purpose to the people where they see that you do care about them as much as you care about your business. Mm. Um, they will fund that. They would be able to probably also give um, learners um, that they would pay stipend for, which could enable you to probably open the more branches uh, that you need to open. I'm at Services Sita. I came to speak with a lady by the name of Monica, who is going to assist me with training my staff. Yeah, let me go and try my luck. Thank you. So, this is Services Sita, and they said that they will assist me. For me, there's a few things. One being um, the fact that he is an eco friendly car wash. I yeah. think the critical. Uh, water shortage mm -hmm. in the Western Cape area is alerting a lot of people that we need to exactly consciously become eco-wise. Mm. Secondly, it is the fact that he can, in a very short space of time, scale it mm. um, because all he needs is this trolley and some more guys to do it. Yeah, he's got the track record. Thirdly, everybody's looking for convenience. So if your car's part and his niche market is where he's in buildings, etc., yes. everybody's looking for convenience. Mm. So if you can have your car washed by a company that's in your in your building, you can trust it, etc. There's, you know, he's already got the mm. relationship with with it makes absolute sense to me. And they're professional. Correct. They're professional. Correct. I like that. Correct. I mean, I, I also like how he's thinking about his business model and where he wants the business to go. Um, and this emphasis of potentially creating a franchising model where you can get some of his employees to now start their own businesses on the back of those cards, I think that's a brilliant idea. The only concern that I would have is something that he also flags as part of his business, which is around high staff turnover. Mm. And if your business, you want to steer your business towards the franchise model where your employees now become owners of their own businesses, then there might be a challenge there. But also with high staff turnover, you're likely having to find yourself having to onboard people all of the, all time. the time. And that might take some time away from, mm. your, mm. from your business. Mm. But my only issue with this franchising model was 
it was a very kind of warm and fuzzy idea. And my view was, hey, don't take on, it's, it's not something for staff. It is mm. something for people that are able to organize sites. Mm. Sure. Because what is his biggest impediment to growth is leases. Is leases. So if Balisa gets then has been able to get a lease in an area that he can't get a lease, maybe she's got a relationship there yes. or, you know, whatever, that's a franchisee right there. Mm. He's putting himself in a really, really tough spot by just giving away franchises mm. essentially to your staff. Um, that's, that's, that's a... That's a very difficult expansion model. I also think the, the task of having him go out and speak to a small ad agency, negotiate a price, has probably been a valuable one for him yes. because in, ter in terms of what he's shared here mm. on how some of the marketing spend can actually lead to the business Correct. growth, mm. I think some of that is very valuable. I mean, Correct. a loyalty program sure. in that kind of sector is potentially something Perfect. that's unheard of, mm. but I think it's something that could potentially work and lend it, itself. It does to work. Kind of I can tell you, loyalty programs, yeah. it's been proven over and over you know, some of his sites are in shopping malls. Yes. Typically, yeah. the same people go to the same mall yes. over and over again. Absolutely. So if I now know that is part of my routine, Absolutely. a loyalty program works go. quite well. Mm. So there it we is go. interesting. I'd mm. be interested in having a conversation with him about which of the, the elements of the marketing he yeah, plan he's going to prioritize. He's going to prioritize yeah. 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 I mean, he did the best he could, but this is not... You can see this is not job. an account. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's evident. It's not a proper job. But it isn't, the numbers still look decent. Okay, let's take a look at the next business, an agro-processing business uh, called Kharose. My name is Edward Maladelawa Harose. I'm the founder of Harose Harose. We produce our very own unique product, which is sweet potato yogurt. It's a yogurt made out of sweet potatoes. You can contact us more Facebook page. Our Facebook page is Harose Harose. Let me spell it for you. It's K-G-A-R-O-S-E, K-G-A-R-O-S-P-T-Y-L-T-D. All right, so I mean, we've seen the business. Um, just to provide context, I mean, the guy has got his, his cheeky. He's energetic. No, he's a great guy. He was very worried that we didn't have businesses of our own. Yeah, he just said I have questions. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, is there any of you who run a business more leader? Yeah? Is there any of you who have business? All, all three of us have got <laughs> businesses. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm like, yes, in fact, I have. But that's valid. <laughs> yeah. I think that's valid. I think that's right to us. He's right. He's right. Right. right to us. I was very cheeky about it, <laughs> um, which is, and, and the reviews um, was, was great uh, on it. Uh, you know what? I, I think there's something here, particularly because of the health and wellness trend that is happening, and he's aware of it. got four minutes to impress us with your business pitch, and that four minutes starts right now. Good luck. With the 50000 investment, I'm going to buy two equipments, which is um, industrial blender that costs 24,000 rand. Number two, industrial fermentation equipment, which costs uh, 25,000. Total cost is 49,000 rand. Production. Um, with both equipment, I'll be able to produce Six liter of yogurt per day, which will be equal to one twenty or five hundred gram yogurt when packaged. There are a few things that we think you should do. Kijeri fumara, unkoeta. Yapi. Okay. Kuba wofumana accountant, who's a CA, who is a registered accountant. I get. Okay. Okay. That is not a problem. But we did say an audit of everything so far that he records on and on. But we did the budget so you can show us and other people and anybody else that's wanting to talk to you a proper set of statements and books. Zejuen Tan, your business. Right. The second thing that we suggest you do is Nakbata Bonamangwal from all these shops that you're talking about. Okay. Email Nyana Fela Ering Yano. How can I refer to the product? Okay. What are you doing? I'm a company called Longkien Vasi. 
re rana di shopo tsa mosepetsele mo le mphopo re kopane le ba gharo se gharo se gore ba tsa re di fa di container ji 200 ka go di ka go edi so o mphile le ngolo le yena o bontsha re nore go go kwa re re fedile ba me ya ka se bolo kwa ne correctional service e tlo bo tlo bana le bo le manager wa club per masses mo lo reng I am going to put a little bit of a product in the shop. I am going to shop in the shop. So, I am going to put a little bit of a product in the shop. I am to make business in the shop. I am standing here representing a company called BioLocal ZA. Our main focus and aim is to promote FMCG products that are made by black youth. And Kharos Kharos is one of the new products that we've taken on board. We have an online store by local.co.za and we also distribute at market and other innovative ways. I mean, I'm very impressed. I think he's got a very innovative product here. Uh, mm. If I think about you know the value chain that he works in, then this exercise must have been valuable for him because going forward he's going to have to do a lot of compliance work. I mean, exactly. especially if you're working with some of the retail chains, you're going to have to come and produce at certain specifications with a certain yeah. sort of kind of production volumes that are needed um, to, to to justify a product. Yeah. The last thing, we go for the contact details. It's uh, some incubators, Afkri. You've got a good business over Kupe Tuso, Ubonor na Bakao Tusakai, Bakao Sapotaka in Wabon. Okay. Yeah. It's over after the program you have been at the program. The program here, you want to show us the potatoes. So, program here, one of the jam, a week, it took what you have in Chakwa, Villa Villa, and the plant production, yes, with potato. Then, after training, you look over access to. To, to financial equipment, bowhole, fence, and every single thing, tailoring a proper farm here in the My name is Wini Ramotwala. I'm working for Bolobani Municipality under the section Economic Development and Tourism, subsection uh, Enterprise Development. Uh, we intend to incubate Haros Haros PTY LTD in our it's the same incubation program. Uh, we'll provide him with the intervention for developmental support that will include the product development, uh, the market linkage, and the access to funding. Uh, yeah, I, I, and I really like the fact that he went out and he did everything that we asked yeah. him to do. And whether he's going to you know, get the 50,000 or not. Mm. I think he himself has got sure. uh, a bird's eye view of his business now. Yeah. Just on the financials though, I, um, I was quite concerned in looking at his income statement that, you know, there wasn't a cost of sales figure. So, you know, much of uh, sort of the, mm. the uh, gross profit or income that he'd made uh, was largely on the back of the sales that he had. Mm. Um, and, and maybe that's sort of a question he should have when he goes back to his accountant in Polokwane to say, yeah. you know, why is it that you haven't captured the cost of sales yeah. amount, which in a business like his, it's um, it certainly becomes a, a critical point. Guys, we've got to be so careful here, and this is for entrepreneurs watching everywhere. Mm -hmm. A lot of people call themselves accountants. Exactly. And they're bookkeeper. Mm. or, you know, they just, yeah, but a cost and finance, and then they're now like, they say they're accountants. And, and he did, I mean, he did the best he could, but this is not, you can see this is not job. an account. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's evident. Not a proper job. But it isn't, the numbers still look decent. I mean, yeah. he's, if you look at his revenue number versus this kind of costs that he says he's got on the last page, his budget plan, um, and the, the, the gross profits mm -hmm. that are left afterwards, it still looks fairly decent. He'll now have more staff. Mm. And you know, it's easy to manage three people a lot more difficult to manage 10 people. Mm. I, I think it's a strategic concern more than it is an accounting concern because in as much as it applies to, to the numbers, it can easily apply to also to the commercial relationships that he has. So it's easy now because you've got about six or so letters of intent and about six sort of clients that you need to manage. But multiply that by five when you've got about 30 people to manage, 
then you're probably going to need some back-end support within the business to be able to run the day-to-day -day operations, manage um, all of your labor, sort of have all of that in place. And I think the difficulty here is that, you know, the next step for him is potentially to create a management team around which he can work. And then he becomes the face of the business and he establishes and manages those relationships. Well, just external, he probably can't afford, I mean, he can't afford people to come in and work. But some people to just come in and advise and assist him on an ongoing basis. So he's going to need more than 50k. Yeah, I mean, he can. He, he's charming, so he can get favors and get people to advise on an ongoing basis yeah. and teach him. But your concerns around the working capital requirements mm. are valid because, again, if you've got six clients, you can maybe fund them yourself. You don't need a lot of money. Yeah, but he's in the incubation for development support with so Polokwane now. Yeah. And that's, that forms part of the incubation process. But you understand, anyway. if you've got 30 clients yeah. Yeah. waiting for them to pay you, all of a sudden changes the picture. Exactly. Now you need quite a bit more money to be able to fund your business while you're waiting for yeah. payment. And that again, I mean, the lady made it very clear, they focus on developmental support, access to funding, Fund. etc. Mm. So as he grows, I think he's going to get the right support. They, yeah. they, they're giving him the correct support to be able to assist him. But does he need the money? Because he might not be the person that would benefit from this money the most. Yeah. There might be other businesses that could use, make better use of this money. Yeah. I'm feeling quite nervous to be honest with you, but let's see. So now we've got to pick our top four and then tally it up. So everybody's got 90 seconds to pick your top four. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our work here is done. The team is going to deliver these envelopes to the five businesses that we looked at today. Abantu bani ingi baba kaba ngi uguti intanta inte ba lege gakulu weza ma business. God wagi. Today's deliberation showed that you create your own luck. Umanga bage we na genje ngo suma business. Wenza amatasko nige zwe we na ngo kulu buz misen. Jongo bage top four yeti siketi u. So we discuss uguti spaces. Um, I made it to an extent today I'm here to be nominated if I'm part of the top four or not, you know. So if I made it, I'll be happy and I'll appreciate everything. And then if I didn't, I'll also appreciate the chance of uh, getting the opportunity to go and present my business and the way I work. Uhambo lot les bili, luya emi trend. Uguhambi sa envelope, kumpa essentials. Um, it, it, it feels like judgment day because uh, I'm getting, it's like getting, uh, you know, when a matriculant writes their exams, it's like what write the results whether I'll pass it or not. So that's how it feels for me. Yeah, I, I, put, I put my effort in and hopefully they see the potential in the business. Umasugai Mitred, City N1, Sia Epulukwan. Suma business pay to Abatatu, Basaka and Gutibas Vulena is enveloped Zabu. Tina, who humble way to Lua Munagaladi Gardens, Emma Fiking. So now in my hand, I've got the envelope from Making Moves. 
that's going to tell me whether I've made it through to the top four. I'm feeling quite nervous, to be honest with you, but let's see. I feel nervous because I don't know what's inside it. For my business to move on to the next stage, it's very important because there's a lot at stake here, you know, including job creation, including expanding on of my business as well. We really, really need this opportunity. There is so much that we have learned. It's very important for me because I feel like uh, I'm representing the tattoo artists around South Africa and I believe I'm going to make it. If we do not go through, whatever it is that we have learned till today is stuff that we are already implementing and we're already seeing the benefits and the improvements. Just January, uh, we've managed to grow. Uh, we have got two new companies on our dispenser side of the businesses just because of the uh, extensive marketing uh, that I've went through. <laughs> to the next round. Um. <laughs> by force, by power. <laughs> one petal down, one more to go. <laughs> Winning that 50,000. <laughs> Feels like a distinction. <laughs> uh, I'm not that uh, sad or feeling bad, you know. So this to me is like, uh, it's telling me to go work harder and do more in terms of growing my business. I learned a lot in terms of visiting other tattoo artists, checking their stores. Yeah, it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot as a person. Now I got my business way to Aman and Genegwela Manga. Harose Harose. Mpa Essentials, Munakaladi Garden, Ganye ne Supreme Car Wash. Bonage, si zoba bona gule di sonto elandi live. Lepo ke kona bezo bed kute lana. Four hundred and fifty thousand rand. If you are an entrepreneur and would like to be featured on the show, contact us on Making Moves at sabc.co.za or visit our website.